Hey, how's it going? Uh, this is going to be a very basic intro on learning some chords on the guitar. Um, what we're basically going to do is learn four chords. And I chose a key that is, uh, is popular in tons of songs. Um, a lot of times you'll get a chord book that has all the major chords listed in one section and then all the minor chords listed and and all the seven chords and then all the minor seven chords and so on and while I think it's good to know all that stuff um, it's it's not a uh, practical approach to learning how to play a song because a lot of times all those chords don't necessarily go together and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a group of chords four chords in the key of G and what that means is all those chords are going to fit together. They're going to work together to make a song. And um, I want to go over some basics on um, how to get the right sound. <clears throat> and if you have problems or if you have muted strings, what what maybe uh, what maybe is causing that? So um, first, we're going to start with just building chords from the ground up. So with a G chord, we're going to start with a G. Um, and these are kind of simple versions of these chords. Um, if you're a, a purist, you may, you may say some of these are cheating, but, um, I'm here to tell you that there's thousands and thousands of songs that use these versions of these chords. And, um, my thought is if you can play a song with them and if people have recorded songs for 50 years using these chords, then I don't think it's really cheating. So, um. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, build a G chord from the ground up. So we're going to start on the first two strings, the bottom two. Always count the strings from the bottom up, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so first and second string, and we're coming up to the third fret, which is where I have a dot right there. And so I'm putting my fingers up as close as I can to the fret without being on top of it. Okay. And my index finger is going to go on the fifth string, second fret and my middle finger is going to be on the 6th string, 3rd fret. Now something that's important is, it's hard to see from this angle, um, I'll try to show you, but you want your fingers to curve like this over the fretboard. And the reason for that is, right now, you want your fingers to only touch the strings that they're supposed to be on. So you want to curve them, you don't want to let your fingers cave in like this, you can kind of see from that angle. You want them curved like that, okay? So um, that's your G chord. You should have the third and fourth string open, and then the other other strings have a finger on the string. So that's going to be your G chord. Now sometimes you'll hear something like this, and what that buzz typically means it's one of two things: either you're not pushing down hard enough or you need to slide your finger up closer to the fret. So you can see I can use the same amount of force right here. Just slide my finger up and that immediately clears up the sound. So a lot of it isn't necessarily push down harder, although sometimes that is the case. A lot of it's try to crowd the fret. You don't want to be on top of it. If you are, you're going to get a muffled sound like that. So you don't want that either. So it's kind of that fine line of get as close to the fret as possible without being on top of it. We've got a G chord. If you hear something muted, you might check your fingers and see if like one of your fingers is touching another string. Remember, try to arch your fingers over the fretboard so that they're only touching the string that they're on. So that's your G chord. If I move these two fingers from the fifth and sixth string down one string, now they're on the fifth and fourth string. So fourth string, second fret, fifth string, third fret. And again, these two are in the same spot. I haven't moved these two. They're on the first and second string, third fret. Now if I play the bottom five strings, then I have what's commonly called a C2 chord, like the number two, or sometimes you'll see C add nine. And all that means is you're you're playing a C chord that has uh, the second note up from a C, the second scale degree added to the chord. In this case, that note's a D, so if you're counting up from C, 
one, two. It's the second note up, so we're calling that a C2. Um, it's also nine notes up if you play all the way up the scale. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's where you can get C2 or C add nine. They both mean the same thing. So, so I've got G and C2. Okay, we'll do D next. So on a D chord, let's start with middle finger on the first string, second fret, ring finger on the second string, third fret, and then index finger on the third string, second fret. So again, I'm trying to get close to those frets there without being on top of it. For a D chord, I'm going to play the bottom four strings. And you might hear something like this. And now I can feel that string buzzing on the back of my ring finger, so I have to curve my hand, get my ring finger off of that string. And I may hear something like this. See how, this, how far this finger is from the fret? I've got to scoot it up close to that second fret so I can clear that string up. Okay, so that's a D chord. Then E minor, this is everybody's favorite, two fingers. We're going to be on the uh, middle finger is on the fourth string second fret. Index finger is on the fifth string second fret. And I'm not using my ring finger and pinky for anything. A lot of times I just kind of curl them up to get them out of the way. And on this one you can strum all six strings. Okay. So those are our four chords. G, C2, D, and E minor. Okay, well you think, well, what song could I play with those four chords, you know? So if I take uh, D, and then I go to C2, and then I go to G, okay? If I just take some individual notes from that chord. And you all recognize that, Sweet Home Alabama, okay? That song is four minutes of D, C2, and G. And they do a lot of different riffs in between, you know, but it all comes back to the basics of D, C2, and G. So we're not going to get into all that yet, but I do want to talk about just some basics in rhythm. So when you're strumming, you got two basic directions, down and up. And uh, for something like this, if I follow a four beat pattern, and the beat is going to be my down strum, and the end of the beat is my up strum, and I think one, two, three, four, and, and that's my strum pattern. One, two, three, four, and 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 I do the same thing for the C2. Now I'm going to try to strum the bottom five strings. And same thing for G. And try to strum the correct strings. That'll come more with time, so I wouldn't worry about it too terribly much at first. D is the bottom four. C or C2 is the bottom five. And then G is all six. And if I take that strum pattern simply... Then I've got the beginnings of a song. And if I break that down and I just play one measure on D, one measure on C2, and two measures on G, then it's going to be like this. So one, two, ready, and... If you 
start to speed that up a little bit, then it's going to get closer to the, that song. So one, two, three, and... take some really simple chords and quickly get to where you're playing a song that's always my goal in teaching is I want someone playing a song as fast as possible so I hope this helps if you have any questions uh, leave a comment and I'll try to get to it and if you have a request of a song or something that you want me to work on or make a video of put that in the requests in the comments also and I'll do my best thanks take care